So last night around dinner time, we took the ferry over from Oregon, New York to New London, Connecticut. And I drove about an hour and a half east here to Rhode Island. And uh, right now, as you can see, I'm already out of breath. We have a literally probably more than a 40 pound backpack on our back doing some fishing that is probably number one on my entire bucket list. So right now we're en route down this path in the middle of the woods, headed to an oceanside cliff. So time check 7.30, I've already been up since five. It took forever to load up this backpack. And uh, little secret, I had about half a gallon of olive oil in the back in a glass container that spilled all over this backpack. So there's a good chance we'll never be seeing the shirt again. We'll go over the setup and everything once we get out there. We're not making the same mistake we made in Long Island. Went to a tackle shop. We got some green crabs here, some squid, some actual real good bait. You know what's gonna be a stand when we got the boots on. Let's just get out there, find our way to the cliff. And this should be an interesting day, just literally fishing for whatever bites here. All these Rhode Island bluffs. You. Let's hope this is a sign the fishing spot is good. This is quite the walk right here. I'm barely fitting through anything. Uh, not really good for your back. What? What? You talk to me. Talk to me. So guys, just looked up the law. This lady's beeping at me. I'm allowed within 10 feet of the high water line right now. So this being low tide, you can see the grass right here. She is, uh, I don't know, guess beeping at me. I'm allowed to go over here though, for sure. Hello, can you hear me? All right, well, I'm sure the police are called or whatever, but I mean, I know my right here, so I hate to be that guy, but I mean, I just walked two miles through complete public woods. We're not even going close to up there near their house. We're just gonna walk around to this island here and uh, that should be that. So we'll keep the GoPro on in case the lady decides to come back and yell at us, but I'm literally not doing anything wrong. House Bill 8055, I mean, I may be wrong. I'm not a legal scholar, says have within 10 feet of the high water mark. So at low tide, I'm in the water. I'm more than fine. But this is a good thing because it means the fishing pressure should be very low. This is quite the trek. Holy God, bro. I don't even know if I can get over here. This is extreme. Every sense of the word. Oh my God. Extreme, extreme, extreme. Gotta have both hands. Oh my God. I just want to get out to that rock. Slide right down there if I could. That is suicide. This is it though. This is the spot I wanted to fish. If we can just get down there. Well, our GoPro cut out. We just scaled that cliff here. I don't even get why this lady's mad. I'm, I'm doing more damage to myself if I stay out here. This is insanity. So I do not say this lightly at all, folks. This is literally, all factors considered, already the most insane fishing trip I've ever done. I have been away from home for three days, sleeping in my car. And now I'm out here on a cliff, a cliff in Rhode Island. I mean, just an absolute crazy, crazy landscape to fish. I've walked literally two miles from my car. It took me about an hour and a half to get out here. I had one lady already freak out at me. I'm pretty sure I see the police over there. I'm well within my right to walk out within the high water mark. I mean, it was low tide when I walked out here and I was only walking in the water for 99% of the entire trip. Besides that, I mean, just other factors don't really matter. I'm, I'm a pretty respectful fisherman. I'm not gonna leave trash. Like this guy left his Corona bottle here. So there's other people that have been here probably have been more of a nuisance. I'm literally just gonna make my video, catch some fish. And uh, if the coast looks clear, I'll leave. But that aside, this is an absolutely beautiful beautiful landscape i was scaling some 20 foot cliffs back there i mean just some absolutely insane insane stuff so without further ado we got the gopro on 
Let's catch some fish. If I don't catch a fish here, I may actually cry because this is by far the most incredible fishing experience I've ever been on and I've done a lot of cool things. So what a way to feel alive. Just sweat out everything. My back is covered. A mixture of probably vegetable oil and uh, human sweat. But there's guys fishing out there. They're bailing stripers. They should be by my feet. Should be sea bass, tog. Everything should be out here, guys. Let's catch some fish. Gorgeous day in Rhode Island. Never on the sand, baby. So before we bring out any crazy techniques, I just wanna throw this little fork tail candy around by Tsunami. It's five bucks. I'm all right if I lose it. That's why I'm starting off with this guy by the rocks here. Pigeons on a beat up 4,500 slammer, eight foot Tika Dolphin. Just give it a couple rips around here. I'm mostly gonna be structure fishing today, but if cast and retrieve works, then it works. All right, nothing up top. Let's give her a couple jigs. We hit bottom, probably 20 feet deep here or so. A little rapid jigging action. Oh my God, there's a blitz. There's a blitz right out there. There's literally a full on mega blitz going on right there. Probably little Albies. What a wicked, wicked fishing spot, man. This is incredible. All right, no hits on the jig here. I always knew it was gonna be probably a bait bite over here, at least for the species like sea bass and stuff. The other guys are out a little too far. I mean, there's an absolute mega blitz going on right in front of that kayak. If they might come closer and that'd be so dope. Come on guys. So while we hopefully wait for that blitz to come a little closer, we did bring some actual bait out here because there is a lot of structure we're fishing obviously. And we wanna catch some true New England species like some inshore land-based sea bass, which is number one on my list. Right now we're gonna start a little high low rig right here, three ounce weight. I don't know if this is gonna be enough, but we should be able to catch some porgies, sea bass, maybe some togs. See what we can do with the squib. I wonder if it'll be instant bite. We'll just let her sit for now, I guess. All right, I make things more interesting on the jig, see if we can jig up a big sea bass or something. I'm just gonna tip this little guy here. A tiny piece of squid, add some flavor down there. See if something wants to bite. Normally I at least somewhat know what I'm doing, but I am a complete, complete noob right now. Oh wow, we're on. Oh my God, dude. First drop with the jig. I was getting bit by flies and got sidetracked. Feels like a nice fish, a little sea bass, no shot. Yeah, buddy, let's go. Land-based sea bass, let's go, dude. Epic, epic, epic. Oh, geez, we just got ripped. We just got smoked. All right, we're not gonna be able to do two rods. Bam, major bucket list species already crossed off. Land-based black sea bass, let's go. Beautiful, little guy, this is a New Jersey trophy. Send him back. Far release, but he'll make it. Boom. Gotta love it on the jig. Let's keep on jigging. This is interesting, and the blitz is right back right there. Oh, so close, but so far. Another piece of squid on the jig. Let's let her rip. That guy was like literally instant too. Did not take long at all. Wish we had a little more wind though. These bugs are just nailing me. There he is. Oh, that was a good fish. That was a nice fish, bro. That guy whaled it, dude. Oh man, I keep missing him right there at that rock. So folks, while we did have a couple bites on this guy right here, this little tiny tsunami uh, Albi candy or whatever, I do want to go a little bit heavier here. I feel like we weren't bouncing along the bottom as much as I wanted to. And I would like a little bit more casting distance. So we got a Daiwa Zakara here, 60 grams. I believe that equates to maybe two ounces or greater, something around there. This guy does have treble hooks. So we, the couple fish that we have come unbuttoned here, we should be able to glue those a little easier. And again, we're just baiting the back end here with some of that good squid as a teaser and as to add a little scent. So beautiful setup. Let's give her a rip. Grass for sure. Maybe a fish, not a grass. All right, so we're definitely more in contact with the bottom than last time because we're already pulling up seaweed.
There's a fish. Fish on. As soon as hit the bottom. Don't know what we got. Probably a little micro sea bass. Feels like grass or a fish. Oh, we got a fish. Oh yeah, here he is. Here he is. Boom, number two. Another little dink to cross off the list. There should be some bigger ones down there. I don't know how big, but we can get one keeper size one. That'd be good. I do want to kind of keep this a multi-species day because we're fishing off such a unique area here. The potential to catch so many different fish is really, really high. Try to jig up a couple more sea bass here. Maybe some bigger ones, and then we'll uh, switch up our tactics and get some more species. Phew. See you, bud. Have fun. Phew. Got them dialed. How long did I make that far cast? And that guy hit right on the bottom there. Still monitoring our Albi blitzes. Got one going on down there. Hopefully it comes on a little bit this way. Just big swings. Let that baby fall. Should be one big knothead down there. We can't get a big sea bass doing this. We got some other tricks up our sleeves. Is that a fish? Oh, it was not a fish. Just got broken off, dang it. So in addition to picking up the squid this morning when I stopped at the tackle shop, I also picked up about three dozen of these tasty guys live fresh rhode island green crabs so it's got these guys very lively little crabs chopping them in half getting all those good good guts out there then we got our ounce and a half jaws custom baits jig right here baiting that through the leg right through the belly and uh there definitely definitely should be some tog here we could catch some sea bass porgy maybe even flounder or stripers on this setup here too so let's try to cross another species off the list we got one down being the black sea bass plenty more possibilities to catch out here let's give it a whirl you these guys really aren't going to last long here in the hot, hot August sun. So we got to kind of go through these guys as quick as possible. And this should be fun. I mean, my expectations are very high for Rhode Island togging. I've heard a lot about it. And this is literally jetty tog fishing on steroids. Already getting bit. Oh, wow. Big fish. Okay. We're going to need a much longer leader, guys. We just fed a giant tog a jig. That was pretty much instantly, too. Had a bunch of little bites, bounce around a little bit. And that was our first real hook set gone 30 pound leader not happening time for some 60 pound here all right and since we're in rhode island we're gonna play by rhode island rules no more halfsies whole green crab going down might have a little money hole right here wherever that water is not moving we have a good chance of finding an eddy or a hole i think that's what we're in right now instant bite big bites dude stripped us just like that well, it's a good thing we brought so many crabs out. I don't know if I was going to use them all, but it's safe to say we definitely, definitely are. Bait that whole thing on there. Just give it a little step. Step on them a bit to release those juices, get them nice and crunchy. There he is. There he is. Oh my God. Good fish. Giant. Oh no, we snagged him. Holy crap. I thought I had a humongoid. <laughs> don't really know how we snagged this guy. Poor little fella. This morning, just gonna do some catch and release. Cause this afternoon I wanna do a catch and cook. But there we go. Beautiful Rhode Island tog. Boom. Got a giant half of a crab here. Let's see if we can get Togzilla to come out on this guy. That was an instant bite. Species number two. There he is. There he is. Oh yeah. Wow. Fast. Fast tog. Holy crap. I keep snagging him, man. That's a jumbo to snag. Holy God. Oh, it's only not a giant. It's a 15 inch tog though. There's just gotta be so many fish down there that when one bites, I swing on that one and I snag the one swimming next to him. But 15 inch keeper NJ tog right there. Got some weird stuff going on with his tail. Don't know what that's about, but later today, I'm gonna do some fishing to eat. But as for now, just some fun, multi-species cliff fishing here. Species two, tow tog down. See you, bud. Quite the dramatic release here. Phew. That's a secret right there. Four fifths of a crab, ounce and a half jig. Come on, I just got a stick. I'm getting plenty of bites. There he is, there he is. Oh my God, nice fish, nice fish. They're so fast down there. Holy crap, we hook them in the mouth? Heavy fish, oh yeah, buddy. That's a proper Rhode Island tog. On the jig, that's a land-based tog, baby. Probably 16 inches. Gorgeous fish. I'm sure it angers a lot of you at home that we're releasing these fish right here, but I'm just having fun. 
You gotta give back to the gods one day. Whew. See you, bud. Multiple days grinding in Long Island with pretty much nothing to show for it. And we come out here and we're just smoking fish. We're gonna burn through these green crabs. Then we'll set our target on the next species. This is life, man. This is awesome. Beautiful, beautiful. Thursday morning, middle of August. Can't beat it, life is good. There he is, there he is. Smallest one of the day. That's your average New Jersey fish right there. <laughs> if I could catch a 20 incher, I would absolutely lose my mind. And I know for a fact there's at least, there's gotta be a ton down there. I mean, we've only been fishing this one tiny, tiny chunk of hundreds of miles of rocky coastline. This really is a rock fisherman's paradise. This is just unbelievable. Another gorgeous green crab. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Oh my God, killing drag, giant, giant. Yeah, buddy. Woo! This is freaking sick, dude. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Land-based, 17-inch tide. Woo! I love Rhode Island. So it probably looks a little weird, but we just tied on a one-ounce jig here. We're going a little bit lighter on the jig front here because we don't have a lot of current. It's not as deep as I thought. It is probably 15 to maybe 20 feet deep in the deepest hole, but we're missing a lot of bites. And I think that's because the fish can't really pick up the jig or they're a little too cautious to pick up the big ounce and a half jig. So by going down half an ounce, ideally we'll get some more hookup. So we'll see if it comes true. Dude, mega bites. There he is. Oh, that already feels like a way better bite. And the rule in tog fishing, no matter where you are, beach, boat, jetty, cliff is always to go as light as possible so the tog are way more inclined to bite there he is there he is giant giant one oh my god that's the biggest one of the day gotta be oh no i just aggressive jumbo jumbo ready ready yeah buddy yeah buddy that's a Rhode Island dog, baby. Let's go. Inhaled that one ounce jig. Absolute juicer right there. Yeah, buddy. Let's get a measure on this guy. 19 and three quarter inches. Absolute beaut of a Rhode Island tog right there. We'll let him go to live another day. Yeah, buddy. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. 20 incher from land. Well, almost. So we've got maybe... A dozen and a half more green crabs. We're gonna run through these guys real quick. Maybe catch a 30 incher now. <laughs> no, but 19 and a half is close enough to 20. Feels good to cross that guy off the list. Try to cross off a couple more species on the list, but right now I'm satisfied with the sea bass and tog. That's what I wanted to catch when I came out here today. So to get those guys is just awesome. Great feeling. Sick area, sick day, sick life. Phew. Another one, another one. Oh my God, he's giant. He's big, way bigger. Way bigger than the last one I got. Guys, giant. Holy God. Dude, why did this guy feel so ginormous? Oh my God, dude. This thing I thought was like 30 inches. Yeah, buddy. I mean, it's just too easy. Just pristine jumbo togs off the rocks here. What is, what is this place? This is incredible. What even is this place, dude? This guy I thought was huge. There he is, there he is. Oh my God. What do we got? Giant. Then we snagged a giant on accident. Tail hooked. Yeah, buddy. Another keeper via the tail. Beautiful Rhode Island tog. And that's probably where we're gonna wrap up the tog fishing here. Um, we've had our fun catching a bunch. We ran through literally all but like six of our green crabs here. But. Caught plenty of tog, caught a couple sea bass earlier. I still want to cross off a couple more species. So it's time to up the difficulty level and try for some different fish. So while these were all right for jigging up a couple small sea bass, the real reason why I bought so many of these epoxies and heavy minnow metal jigs is actually just for cast and retrieval. So yeah, jigging them works, but it's not the best way to use these guys. We're just gonna be bombing these out as far as I can with this eight foot surf rod right here and just ripping it in 
trying to catch whatever decides to show up. Unlike Tog fishing, we're not gonna stay in the same spot. We're just gonna keep moving around all of this gorgeous, gorgeous water to cover because we are sticking out like a thumb right now into the middle of the ocean here. So the range definitely exists to get these species. The hoagie heavy minnow, 56 gram. We'll start giving her a rip and uh, see if we can catch a couple fish. So we gave it the good old college try with the jigs, casting and retrieving it around here without any takers. Uh, maybe it would be better in the morning. I probably should have started with that. But regardless, we tied on a heavier epoxy jig right now. It's a hoagie epoxy, tipped it with squid. So we'll just balance this guy around these rocks and maybe catch a flounder, sea bass hopefully, even a porgy. I just want to get one more species. There he is. Got something. Oh yeah. Smoked it. Smoked it, smoked it. What do we got? Got some weight, I think. I'm on up. Man, that light line is getting a beating today. Well, that's the biggest one of the day though. <laughs> Nothing to show off, but pretty sea bass right there. Tentacles on the jig. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Guy smoked it too. See if we can get a couple more bites. All right, folks, that send absolutely took every ounce of energy out of my body. The hike in, the hike out, being in that sun all day with only a little bit of water to drink. I mean, I was just absolutely dead. It was like 85 degrees. I literally, I, I could not have walked another mile. I was so, so exhausted. That backpack weighed like 50 pounds, but uh, it was worth it. I mean, it was freaking worth it to say the very least. I caught my PB land-based tog at almost 20 inches, 19 and three quarters. I could have kept bailing keeper tog over and over if I wanted to. Just catch and release on them. Caught my first ever land-based sea bass. I mean, a respectable size one at least. And uh, yeah, I mean, just a beautiful, beautiful scenic area to fish. Got a cool video on the drone, but uh, yeah, that's going to be a wrap for this video, guys. Just got done refueling. Had a delicious late lunch here in Newport, and uh, we're on our way to film our next video. So we got a couple hours of daylight left, you know, never end the send. So let's get back on the road. Go film yet another video for you guys. Hopefully a banger. I'm exhausted, but the send never ends. Thanks for tuning in, guys. This is quite a road trip so far, and uh, it's just going to keep getting better. You?